Now, welcome back to Deadline Abuja. I still have here with me the Managing Director of the Federal Road Maintenance Agency, Engineer Gabriel Amuchi. Welcome back to the program. Thank you. You were telling me about the difference between the work done by the Ministry of Works and FEMA. Now, I, I now understand that FEMA does menial maintenances of roads, day-to-day -day maintenances. I'd like to know, how would you explain where roads are fixed and then in a matter of a week, maybe a month, the roads go back to the, the, bad, the bad states they were in just before they were fixed? How do you explain that? What, what happens? For your clearer understanding of the function of the agency, yes. it's good to lead you through again the explanation I made in the past. That one, FEMA's function is to ensure the continuous maintenance of all federal roads for efficiency and effectiveness. Okay. And this includes repair of bridges when the need arises. And then the maintenance programs will include portal patching and sometimes resurfacing, strengthening of the pavement. And then from time to time you find that uh, you find embankments, huge embankments get washed out because of uh, storm water and then erosion. And thereafter, FEMA is invited to reinstate the washout. So the jobs FEMA do range from the uh, repair of minor failures, repair of major failures, pavement strengthening, you know, surface over, uh, renewal, that's like overlay, what we call overlay. Sometimes you have irregular surfaces that will do, um, um, you know, we mill it out and then mill such surfaces away and then uh, provide a new surface. So um, it's all embracing with respect to maintenance. Sometimes culverts collapse and we will feel like we did in Casina recently that what we required there was a short bridge. FEMA was mandated to build a short bridge to replace a seven cell box culvert that got washed away in 2012. So this is the scope of work. Everything required on the federal road that needs to be maintained after the construction and reconstruction have been done is handled by FEMA. Uh, with the question of um, roads failing after repair, um, I'll, I'll let you know that most of the roads we're dealing with in the past 10 years are roads that, like, like I said, have lived for over 35 years of lifespan of construction. And throughout this period of 35 years, no effective maintenance programs have been in place. So the, the surfaces have become weak. For instance, you have a 100 kilometers length of road. And because of age, wear and tear and exposure, this road surface is now qualified for a comprehensive overlay. What is, the usual, what is the usual lifespan, lifespan of a road? Sometimes 20 years, sometimes 15, sometimes 25, according to the design. But the roads we're dealing with, a majority of them are above 30 years of construction period and no maintenance comprehensive that has been in place. So what we're doing now, you find that in the whole stretch of this road, you have degrees of failure, and we intervene according to the intensity of failure, because you may not have the funds to uh, resurface the entire 100 kilometers at a go. So what you find is that if I reinstated 20 kilometers that have failed, and then um, another week stretch, you know, uh, fails thereafter, you will misunderstand the failure to be the one I have fixed. That is why we have introduced continuous maintenance. So if the roads fail, according to availability of fund, we repair the failures and keep an eye on the road. If there are other failures, we quickly intervene. It is not to say that the locations repaired fail soon after. It is just that most of these services are weak and old pavement and we don't have the comprehensive uh, uh, capital intensive requirement to deal with all of them at a go. Secondly, if you have also repaired um, a weak location and you are not careful with the joints and you are not you know, um, keeping an eye on the, on the location, you could have cracks and these are the ones who come to seal soon after. But it is not necessarily the locations that have been worked on. 
In 2007, there was a law that, that, would, that was passed which allows FEMA to have 5% fair charge of petroleum products. And of this 5%, 60% um, goes to the state government, while about 40% comes to FEMA. But some state governments that want to benefit from 60% must have an established road maintenance agency. How far has this policy helped in the rehabilitation of roads across the country? And that was uh, a good policy put in place by federal government that would have made dependence on annual uh, appropriation, um, uh, lessen that body from government, because we we're supposed to be accessing, you know, five percent user charge on petroleum products, uh, but to date we're yet to have access to that fund, and. Um, the state governments that have established road agencies notify us who have their records, and then they are working with the Federal Road Maintenance Agency, FEMA. Collectively, we are making requests and um, making applications to see how government can commence the effective deduction of the 5%. Uh, most people think that the deduction has been on, on course, but the truth is that we are yet to access that fund. Any reason so why this is so? We are very hopeful that with the transformation agenda of the federal government, uh, these approvals will be made to FEMA in due course to access such funds, you know, to augment the annual appropriation for road maintenance. I'm interested in this fund. It's, it's 2007 up until now. Mm -hmm. That's roughly seven, okay, let's call it six years. What has held up the accessing of this fund? Yes, it's, 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 um, I think it's the modalities, implementation modalities of government. I'm aware that the Honorable Minister of Works, along with uh, Mr. President, have received all the, uh, Mr. President has given all the approvals for us to be able to access the fund. But we're working out the modalities between the agency and then the, uh, the Petroleum Ministry to see how soon we can begin to access it. When was this approval given? It's a long time. It's a policy issue that you need to um, clear all the hurdles. And what part has state governments played in this? The state governments that have established the, uh, their own road maintenance outfits Agencies. are aware that we've not started accessing the funds. And I, I can assure you that as soon as we're able to access the funds, you know, the sharing modality will be put in place for those that are working on their respective road maintenance agency. Carrying out your duties, your day-to-day -day duties, what are the challenges you have, you face? Yes, normal challenges, um, one such as um, requests that we have been making that we are allowed to have our funds, annual appropriation, for instance, all year round into the dry season. Um, if we stop our construction year, you know, um, the dry season about March, we should be allowed to be able to access our funds till March. Secondly, um, you know, the challenge of human attitudes on our roads, for instance, uh, willful damages that uh, occur on the road that lead to road failures. We have been able to put in place a committee to check that and encourage, discourage Nigerians from cutting across our roads, vandalizing uh, you know, uh, bridge, metal bridge, guardrails. And of course, finally, like it is the case in all developed economies, you can't do effective maintenance depending solely on budgetary appropriation. So we're expecting that the other sources of income that have been entrenched in FEMA Act we will have access to them. For instance, international vehicle transit charges that allows us to access funds. People pay some levy for driving through our border into Nigeria and out, as we do when we go to other countries. That is also being uh, explored, the possibility of having such funds for road maintenance. Then the 5% user charge uh, you've talked about, We've had meetings over that, on that, even today. Uh, somebody is already working on it and ensuring that all the bottlenecks, gray areas are cleared for us to be able to access uh, that fund. If you were asked to make a projection on, on Nigeria's roads, safe 
free and comfortable roads. What sort of projection would you make? Yeah, I would say that to that extent, we have been able to have more than 80% of our federal roads, not federal highways, in safe, motorable condition. There is a lot more to be done. We're working on that. And you know, I, I have often said that maintenance of a road starts from the day construction stops. By this I mean every day you need to clean the road. You need to check your road signs. You need to clean your drains. You need to cut your vegetation. You need to replace road signs, warning signs, road markings. So maintenance of a road is a continuous process and that is the practice world over. We're trying to uh, begin to imbibe that culture in our Nigerian roads at the federal level and encourage the states to, you know, to do something similar. So uh, with respect to Nigerian federal roads, uh, I think the story has changed for some time and um, the public is also of that opinion. But the assignment is still there, a lot of work is still to be done and we're right on it to ensure that in the very near future we'll have, even if they are single carriageways, well maintained. Thank you very much for coming on Dateline Abuja. Thank you. Thank you for your mails. Do keep them coming by sending your comments and views to the address and Twitter handle on your screen. See you next time.